Welcome to my video about the STEM Lab 125 10-bit version. Ned Pattaya kindly sent me a copy of that board um, and they also sent me two of these Grove sensor boards which also have headers for Arduino shields as well um, and they also sent me lots of different Grove modules so I'll try and experiment with those and show you how they work and how to interface with them. And my ultimate aim is to try and make um, an air quality monitoring station out of this and the Vepa tire board. Um, so I do have two, so I can compare the 10-bit boards with the 14-bit boards. Um, so there's one here and there's also one over here that's already connected. I'm going to have a look at the analog and the digital inputs. I'm uh, also going to look at some digital outputs in this video. So here we've got the two STEM Lab 125 boards. There's the original 12514, which is a 14-bit board, and then there's the today's video is about the 125 10-bit board. The main difference is, as told by the name, is that the fast analog inputs and outputs are 10 bits on this board and they're 14 bits on this board. But there are other differences as well. So you can see there's a sync connector on the 14 bit board and instead there isn't, but there is a battery jumper on the 10 bit board. And on the back, the 10 bit board has got a connector for the, a, a jumper connector, so you can connect the battery onto it. And it also has, um, there's no USB console, which there is on the 14 bit, but instead it's got some holes for you to put in a serial connection. So there is, um, if I can show you there, there is space on the board. There's three holes here for you to put in pins for a serial connection. And then you could use a USB to serial converter or any other method of reading serial to connect to the console. I have found the consoles really useful on the Red Pattaya. Um, it's fairly straightforward to connect by Ethernet. If you've got Ethernet, it can just use DHCP. But if you're trying to connect via Wi-Fi, then it's definitely useful to have the console so you can put the settings in there. Um, there is also a difference in memory. So the 10-bit board has got uh, 256 megabytes of memory, and the 14-bit board has got 512 megabytes of memory. So that's the main difference between the two boards. I've also got, as part of this video, I'm gonna look at the expansion board for sensors. And it's got a few different options. So there's these Grove connectors on the top, but there is actually also Arduino headers as well. So you could use Arduino shields with it. Um, and then um, Repertai have kindly sent me a selection of Grove modules. So there are some, uh, digital in, some uh, digital out, and some are analog inputs as well. Um, so there's a variety of different inputs and outputs. Uh, so this is the home page of the STEM Lab 125. It's the same for both the 125.10 and the 125.14 bit versions. Um, the only real difference in applications is that the STEM Lab 12510 does actually support connecting just the cables um, of the logic analyzer to the board and that will work on the logic analyzer application whereas the 12514 needs the separate logic analyzer board as well as the cables um, there is a benefit of using the board uh, you do get faster um, sample times and you also get um, some buffering protection as well so you can use the board on both of them, but if you want to go for the low cost option of just using the cables, that will work on the STEM Lab 12510. But today I'm going to look at the Jupyter Notebook. 
and look at the Grove connectors. I have done other videos on the Logic Analyzer and I've done other videos um, on the fast um, analog inputs, but today I'm going to look at the slower analog inputs. They still operate at thousands of um, samples per second, so it's still quite fast compared to uh, some development boards, but it's slower than the 125 mega samples per second analog inputs and outputs. So the benefit of the Grove sensors is that um, they're easy to use. There's already a load of Grove modules that you can buy off the shelf and uh, they connect um, very easily. You don't need to do any soldering and there's a lot of support for them. There is an example that comes with um, the SD card image and um, Webisai have actually sent me this sensor module so I can uh, test it out and it allows you to read uh, analog sensor for temperature. Um, the example actually loads the overlays twice um, so I'm just going to go to the second bit. This first bit is not really needed. Uh, so it loads and this is actually plotting the the, the sensor's behaviour. Um, so it shows the temperature and uh, what the resistance is. And then we can actually do a test. So this is our, we're getting a voltage of one point four nine volts and though it's worked out that that's equivalent to 23.3 degrees Celsius. I think this sensor might need a bit of calibration. It doesn't seem that hot in here, but um, maybe it is. And yeah, that's the analog sensors really. It's, uh, so that's doing an analog read. There's a lot of different Grove analog sensors. I might look at some of them later. But I just wanted to show that was working. There is um, a new version, so I'm using the latest beta version of the SD card image. Um, on previous versions, there's a bug with the slower analog GPIO pins, uh, but that has been fixed in the latest beta version. So I did try this before on the previous one, it didn't work. Um, also, I've made my own. Uh, Jupyter notebook that shows how you can use the digital inputs and outputs. So this is also connected to the same Grove sensor board at the same time. It's got lots of connections so you can have lots of modules plugged in all at the same time. And there's lots of um, pins on the expansion cards that the Vedpatire allows you to connect in. So again, I'm, I, this doesn't really need it because I've already loaded the uh, FPJ overlay and so the next bit is going to turn the relay on then wait for a second and then turn it off and this one uh, I've got the LED module connected to connector 9 this will do the same kind of thing it will turn the LED on and then off second later and then the final one is a digital input so I can read the status of the tilt sensor so false it's not tilted and then if I tilt it, it should turn to true oh no I tilt it that way there you go so if I tilt it up I get true and if I tilt it the other way I get false and true again. And you could put this in a loop and you could connect the tilt sensor to the LED and the relay and you could use, you could even have set points and use analog sensors um, to control the relay and things like that. So you could have a lot more complicated projects but I just wanted to show you how you can simply set it up, use the Jupyter notebooks um, and then you could do more complicated projects using these simple building blocks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you did.
And if you didn't, please give me some feedback and uh, I will see if I can incorporate that in my next videos. Thank you.